This is a pretty simple implementation of a person class. But this implementation is wrong. It has a severe design flaw, which is pretty hard to spot from its symptoms. Suppose we use this object as key in a dictionary like this. If now any of those properties used to implement equals or get hash code are changed, then the internal data structures of the dictionary implementation are broken. So what do we do? Let's talk about immutable objects and data structures. An immutable data structure is one which cannot be changed after creation. An immutable version of the person class would look like this. Notice that all data is passed through the constructor and that all properties are read-only. But how do we work with immutable objects? Instead of altering an existing object, we simply create a new object. Imagine the name of a person needs to be changed. Instead of changing the last name directly, we actually create a new object from the existing one. And during that copy, we change the value of the last name. This brings me directly to the next benefit of immutable objects. Thinking in data transformation flows, then calling APIs to alter state. Let's look at this code. It computes a word cloud. Here the mutable data structure is obviously the dictionary and not the person object. The code is not super complex, but it requires a bit of code reading to understand the details. Working with immutable data structures wherever possible motivates us to think more in data transformation flows than in changing the state. Let's look at this alternative implementation of the World Cloud Calculator. It is not only much more concise, it is also more clear as we can simply read one processing step after another to understand how the input data is processed and the output data is computed. But what about performance? Well, yes, creating constantly new objects and languages which are not optimized for this style of programming, we will create more memory pressure and may lose some performance. But this small performance drop is often not relevant. And if performance is really a concern, then this brings me to the next benefit of immutable objects. Concurrency. We all have multi-core machines these days, so processing data asynchronously or even in parallel seems to be a natural fit. But with shared mutable data structures, this creates a lot of headache. You either carefully have to manage ownership of objects or create deep copies explicitly, or you have to use locking, which has its challenges on its own. On the other hand, if all relevant data structures are immutable, we can easily use asynchronous or parallel processing. So we can simply add here as parallel. We create a new array for each person, so there's no shared mutable data structure again, and group by and two dictionary will handle this internally properly for us. Coming back to the initial example, I would like to highlight one more aspect here. How could the author of the repository know that the person class can be used as key in a dictionary? Or the other way around, how can the author of a person class know whether some other component expects that identity never changes? What I'm talking about here is trust reasonability and predictability of our source code. Managing complexity in software has a lot to do with divide and conquer. See single responsibility principle and separation of concerns. Now separating concerns raises the importance of contract and trust that the other partner is behaving as expected. Immutable data structures can be trusted that once created successfully, those will not change not due to a side effect of another component, not accidentally by a new developer in the team, not due a workaround for an urgent fix late in the project. While immutability is certainly not the solution for every problem, it is a powerful tool to create more trust, predictability and reasonability in our source code. 